Hello again, Math 20-1s. In today's lesson, we are going to finish the lecture on geometric series. And we'll do so by starting off with, as I mentioned last time, uh, quite a difficult uh, example problem. And then a couple of other ones that perhaps aren't too, too bad, but uh, a little bit uh, more unique compared to the different types of problems we were solving in the previous lesson. All right, so what do we got here? <clears throat> a golf ball is dropped from the top of a building 100 meters above the paved road. In each bounce, the ball reaches a vertical height that is three quarters the previous vertical height. Determine the vertical height of the ball after the seventh bounce. Okay, so I wanna set the problem up here. so that the seventh bounce is going to be when n is equal to seven. This original value, the 100 meters, that is not the height after the first bounce. That's the original height. Okay, so let's, let's kind of clarify this a bit. So we'll say the original height is 100 meters, but to set up my sequence, I want uh, the first term in the sequence to be the height after the first bounce. Because what's gonna happen here is you're gonna take this ball and you're gonna drop it and it's gonna bounce back to like three quarters of its original height. That's gonna represent term one, okay? How far it bounces after it hits the ground and comes back up. To calculate that, T1, which is equal to A, we take the original height, we'll drop the units here, which is 100 meters, and then we need to multiply by the common ratio. Now, the common ratio, this would be uh, geometric decay, but again, when looking at geometric decay, you identify how much is actually being retained, and what you're doing is you're retaining three quarters of the previous height. So it turns out that the R value, which is three over four, or three over four is the common ratio. Okay, and we can convert that into a decimal number that makes it a bit easier to deal with. So we can turn it into 0 0.75. It's okay to do this because we're gonna have to write the answer the nearest tenth of a meter anyways. Therefore, <clears throat> the first term, which is the height after the first bounce would be 100 times 0 0.75 and then I would have T1 is equal to 75 meters and again that's the height after the first bounce so that's when n equals 1 so we've got to do that little correction to start off with to get the bounce number to match up with the term in the sequence. Well, I just want to know what this height is. Uh, now, it says the height after the seventh bounce. So we'll use the general term formula for a geometric sequence, which would be T of n is equal to A, R to the power of n minus 1. And we want to find T7, which is the height after the seventh bounce. So that would be equal to... Uh, a, which is 75, multiplied by R, which is 0 0.75, to the power of 7 minus 1. And then I would get T7 would be equal to, and we can quickly calculate this, should be to the nearest tenth of a meter, 13.3 meters. So far, not too bad. I mean, the, this the part A is easy as long as you just make the correction and identify that you want term one to be the height after the first bounce. B is where it gets a bit more difficult. <clears throat> okay, now, it says it wants the total, total vertical distance traveled by the ball when it contacts the floor for the seventh time. 
Okay, so we're contacting the floor. It's not talking about the bouncing here. I'm actually going to draw a picture to illustrate this just because I, I do find this is a bit more of a difficult problem to set up. Okay, so let's have like our original height. That's 100 meters. Now, obviously, when I draw the ball, it would just go down, back up, down, back up, down, back up along in a straight line. But I'm just going to stagger the bouncing just over to the side just so we can see this a bit more clearly. Okay, so we drop this. Okay, then this ball is going to come up to a height of T1. So T1 is the height after the first bounce. Then hits the ground again, and it comes back up to a height of T2. Hits the ground again, comes back up to a height of T3. Comes back up to a height of T4. Now, I'm going to count the number of times it's hitting the ground as well. So if we look at this so far, so far we've dropped it. This is the first time it hits the ground. This is the second time it hits the ground. This is the third time it hits the ground. The fourth time it hits the ground. The fifth time it hits the ground. So we need to hit the ground two more times to correctly draw the picture. So it'll hit the ground for the fifth time. Then it's going to bounce up to a height of uh, T5. And then it's going to, once again, hit the ground and then bounce up to a height that we're going to call T6. So we've got six and we've got seven. Okay, so all of these numbers at the bottom represent the number of times contacting the floor. <clears throat> what it wants me to do is it wants me to calculate what's the total vertical distance traveled by the ball. Now, to do this, we actually have to account for the distance traveled when the ball goes down, when the ball goes up, when it goes down, when it goes up, down 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 when it goes and then goes back down to when it contacts the floor for the seventh time. We need to make an equation we can use to actually calculate this. So I'm going to write down the vertical distance is equal to, well, first of all, it drops 100 meters. So we're going to write that in. Uh, I guess we could write down the original height. So just to kind of illustrate this, so the original height is it's going to travel down this vertical distance. Now, this would be in a straight line. I'm just draw, drawing it over to the side as a curve just so I can separate the different bounces. Now, I need to write down an equation that's going to represent all these other different uh, times when the ball hits the ground, goes up, back down, hits the ground, goes up, and then back down, et cetera. Now, let's first of all focus on just this portion right here, the portion where it hits the ground the first time and it goes up to T1, this height, and it comes back down. If I wanted to write down a mathematical expression that would represent this, so like what's the actual vertical distance traveled when it uh, hits the ground for the first time, goes up and comes back down? Well, if T1 is the height it reaches after the first bounce, uh, then that total vertical distance traveled would actually be plus two times T1. Because what it has to do is it has to go up to T1, and then it has, so that covers a distance of T1 up to that height, and then it goes back down, which covers another distance of T1. So it does this, uh, it does this, uh, yeah, so you have to multiply that, that, that term value, which is the height by two. And it would just keep doing it for the rest of the problem. So uh, we would then have plus 2 times t2 plus 2 times t3 plus 2 times t4 plus 2 times t5 plus 2 times t6.
Okay, so let's uh, sub some numbers in and try to simplify this a little bit. So we have the vertical distance would be equal to the original height, which is 100. Now, what I can do is if all these terms here, I can factor out the common two. And if you do that, then you'd have T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 plus T5 plus T6. <clears throat> I want to take all these terms in brackets <clears throat> and I want to represent them with a single variable. If you take T1, add T2, add T3, add T4, add T5, add T6, what exactly is that? Well, that's, a G, that's going to be a series. So I can actually represent T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 plus T5 plus T6 with S6. Because S6 means the sum of the first uh, six terms in the series. So I can then write down the vertical distance is equal to 100 plus 2 times S6. Now we're going to sub and we're going to plug in an equation for this and actually calculate it. So you'll recall that uh, the equation for the sum of a geometric series, and this is a geometric series because we do have a, a geometric decay. So we're going to use the equation that looks like this one. The one that's Sn is equal to uh, A R to the power of N minus one over n minus one. So this would be equal to 100 plus, the two right here is just identifying that we're going up and coming back down. So it's gonna be two, and then we'll do a substitution for the this equation. So this would look like S6 would be a r to the power of n minus 1 divided by n minus 1. This is actually the equation for s of n. And now we'll start to sub in some of the values here. All right, so this would be equal to 100 plus two times. Now let's start plugging things in. Okay. A, as we defined up here, A is the height after the first bounce. That is 75. R is the, uh, the common ratio and the common ratio we identified up here is 0 0.75. So we're going to have 0 0.75 to the power of now we're doing it for S6, so it's gonna be R to the power of six minus one, and then divide this by six, oh, not six, uh, divide it by, this actually should be an R here, not a six. That's right, uh, R not an N. Yeah, it should be R minus one. Okay, divided by 0 0.75 minus 1, and then close the bracket off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate everything in brackets first. Then I'm going to multiply by 2. Then I'm going to add 100 at the end. So I'm going to work backwards here. So let's go to the graphing calculator and do this. All right, so uh, we'll have open up the numerator. So we've got 75 multiplied by 0 0.75 to the power of 6. And we're going to subtract 1. Close the numerator off. Divide by the denominator. So open the bracket up for the denominator. 
0 0.75 minus 1. Okay, close it off. Okay, that, that represents the value S6. Now I'm going to multiply this by 2 because that's going to account for the ball going up and then coming back down. And then I need to add the original height. So the original height is 100. So if I go back here now, the vertical distance would be Five hundred and ninety three point two meters. Now, I just want to point something out here. So it says it contacts the ground for the seventh time. Contacting the ground for the seventh time is actually uh, what we use in the equation, an n value that would be equal to six. So despite the fact that we did this correction initially, so the correct in, correction initially was to get the term in the sequence to match up with the height of the bounce. Uh, we then introduced a different way of looking at this, which was, which was the number of times that the ball actually hits the ground. So if the ball hits the ground seven times, it still only went to this height right here, which is T6. Okay, this is going to be more... Uh, just something to keep in mind when you're like working through this type of a problem. Now there is a continuation of this example in the back on the next side. So it says, how many times does the ball need to bounce to travel 675 meters in a vertical, uh, a, a total, uh, yeah, 675 meters vertical distance. Okay. So let's write our equation down again. That we got in the previous, uh, page. So your vertical distance. is equal to the original height plus two times s of n. Again, I, I did have the s of n here. If you just look at the, where do I have it down? Yeah, this part right here represents s of n. Now, this time around, it actually tells me what S of N is. It tells me that, uh, or no, it tells me the total vertical distance. So the total vertical distance is 675 meters. So we're going to plug that in. And then what we need to do is we need to figure out the number of bounces. Okay, so this is going to be a little more complicated to determine. Maybe not as difficult to set up, but a little more difficult to deal with in terms of solving. So the vertical distance would be 675. And this would be equal to 100 plus two times, that's S of N. So we'll write down the equation for S of N, which is A multiplied by R to the power of N minus one and divided by R minus one. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a couple of things here. First of all, I'm gonna move this 100 over to the other side of the equation. Eventually we're gonna to try to get this, uh, this N, RN term by itself. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 100 and subtract 100. So that's going to give me 575. And that would be equal to 2. And now let's sub the different values in. So A represents the height after the first bounce. So that was 75. Multiply by 0 0.75 to the power of n minus one. And then we're going to divide this by uh, <clears throat> 0 0.75 minus one. I'm gonna simplify things a little bit. So we're gonna have 575 would be equal to, uh, I can multiply this two by the 75 here. So this would be 150 times 0 0.75n minus one over, and then 0 0.5 minus one would be negative 0 0.25. 
And what I also can do, so again, I combine the two and the 75 here. I can also combine the 150 divided by negative 0 0.25. So that should actually make this increase by uh, uh, four times. So this is going to turn it into, let's double check that. I'm pretty sure that's negative 600 if I do it. So 150 divided by negative 0.25, so it's negative 600. So then I would have uh, 575 is equal to negative 600 and then multiply by 0 0.75 to the power of n minus one. Now again, I wanna get this 0 0.75 n term by itself. So now I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by negative 600. Divide by negative 600. And this would give me 575 divided by negative 600 is gonna give you an ugly repeating decimal number. So this would be something along the lines of negative 0 0.958 and then three repeating. And this would be 0 0.75n and then minus one. So I wanna get this uh, 0.75n by itself. So I'm gonna add one to both sides of the equation. So add one, add one. And then I'm going to have, let's move this down here. I would then have 0 0.0416 repeating is equal to 0.75n. And I want to solve for the value of n. So there's two ways to do it. You could attempt to like write this number with a common base of 0 0.75. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if you actually can do it or not. Uh, I, I do know for sure that we can do this graphically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the left-hand side of the equation and set that as y1. So we'll say y1 is equal to 0 0.041. We'll just round it. We're rounding to the nearest, uh, we'll end up rounding anyways, 0 0.0417. And then Y2, I'm going to plug in 0 0.75 to the power of X. Okay, now let's go ahead and graph this down and see if we can get a solution. So I'll clear Y1 and Y2. In the place of Y1, 0 0.0417. In the place of Y2, we're going to plug in 0 0.75 to the power of X. And let's just go to zoom standard and see what we what everything looks like. Okay, so we got one one of these situations again where uh, uh, because uh, y one is such a small number, like it's it's a horizontal line that passes through the y axis at zero point four one seven. So let's try to zoom a bit. I want to get a bit closer to the x axis. So let's change the y minimum to negative one. Let's change the y max, uh, maximum to 1 and go ahead and graph it again. Okay, I still can't see the intersection point, but I can at least see the line is now off of the x-axis. So let's make this a bit bigger. So let's change the x maximum to maybe like 20 and see if we can observe the intersection point. Okay, and now I can see it. All right, so now use the intersection feature. So second calculate, go to intersect, get close to that intersection point which is right here and enter, make sure the second cursor is close to it, guess the solution. And it tells me that X is equal to 11. I suspect there's a bit of rounding error here just because of uh, uh, the fact that I rounded the repeating decimal numbers. So let's just, let's go ahead and assume it's 11, okay? So then we would have X. Oh yeah, so use the intersect feature. So X is equal to 11. When 
y is equal to 0 0.0417. <clears throat> and x is n, which does represent the number of bounces. So n would just be 11 bounces. I, I'm curious, by the way, if I wrote down as a common base 0 0.75 to the power of 11, I wonder if it actually is zero, that number there. Let's see. Uh, looks like I can quit 0 0.75 to the power of 11. Yeah, not quite. Okay, so I don't know if you actually could have used a common base in this situation. Graphically, it's good enough. Example eight, <clears throat> we have an equation that defines a geometric series. We have S of N is equal to five, three to the power of N minus one. It doesn't tell me what any of the terms in the actual, uh, the sequence or the series are. It just gives me a formula I can use to calculate the sum. Part A, <clears throat> I want to find the first four terms of the geometric series that's defined by this equation. We did a similar example uh, to this one back when we were dealing with uh, arithmetic series. So here's the idea. The first term in the sequence or series, which is A, would just be the finding the sum of one term in the, 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 using the equation to find the sum of a single term. The sum of a single term will just be the first term. So this would be S1 would be equal to five and then three to the power of one minus one. So that'd be three to the power of one, which is three minus one is two. So S1 would then be equal to 10. Since S1 is 10, that means that A has a value of 10. Now, to calculate term 2, term 2 would be the difference between the sum of two terms in the series and the sum of a single term. Okay, the sum of two terms minus, sum, minus the sum of one term would just be the value of the second term. So let's calculate S2. S2 would then be 5, then 3 to the power of 2 minus 1. So S2 would then be 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40. So S2 would be 40. <clears throat> Therefore, term 2 would then be S2 minus S1, which is 40 minus 10. And then term 2 has a value of 30. And this makes sense. If A is 10, the sum of one term would be 10. If term 2 is 30, the sum of two terms would be 10 plus 30, which is 40. Now, it does tell me there's a geometric series. So immediately like, I, I could identify the common ratio. So the common ratio is going to be three. So I mean, to get terms three and terms four, you could just multiply by three each time. But supposing, suppose this is not a geometric nor an arithmetic series, and you, you just had to rely on the equation, you'd have to continue to use this procedure to figure out T3 and T4. So I'll do that, even though it's not actually required because this series is geometric. So T3, would be S4, oh, sorry, S3, not S4. S3 minus S2. So S3 would be five times three to the power of three minus one. Three to the power of three is 27 minus one is gonna be 26. 26 times five is going to give you 130. And then term three would be the difference between these two. So this would be 130 minus 40. And then I get term three is equal to 90. And again, we know that because we already know the common ratio is three. So 10 times three is 30, 30 times three is 90. And if I want term four, term four, would be the difference between the sum of four terms in the series. And 
and the sum of three terms in this series. So S4 would be equal to 5 multiplied by 3 to the power of 4 minus 1. 3 to the power of 4 is 81, minus 1 is 80 times 5, I'm pretty sure it's 400. So this would be S to the power of 4 is 400. And then term 4 would be 400 minus <clears throat> uh, 130. And then term 4, which we'd already expected this, knowing the common ratio is 3, 90 times 3, or 400 minus 130 would be 270. B, I want to find the ninth term uh, without using the uh, general term formula, which we totally could do right now because we know what the first term is. We know it's A equals 10. We know the common ratio is 3. We could plug in uh, T of 9 and then calculate it. But we can use this trick right here again. So if I want the ninth term, the ninth term would be equal to the sum of nine terms minus the sum of eight terms. So this would be equal to using the equation, the sum of nine terms would be five times three to the power of nine minus one. And then subtract S8, which using the sum equation up here would be five, then three to the power of eight minus one. So we can calculate those quickly. Three to the power of nine is 19,683 minus one times five would give you nine, eight, four, one, zero. Three to the power of eight minus one times five is 32,800. And that would leave me with term nine would then be 98410 minus 32800. <clears throat> and that would give me 65610 for term number nine's value. And it just makes a note down here. If you have uh, an equation for S of N, uh, and you want to figure out the nth term, you can take the sum of that number of terms and just subtract the sum of the, yeah, sum of the S of n minus one. So it just means like the sum of the series without including that term. Okay. And again, that, it, 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 does, it does make sense. Okay. So S of n, the sum of n terms minus the sum of the series without this term would be equal to the term that you're missing. All right, final example. <clears throat> we'll do, do a problem where I have to figure out the common ratio. We already did this. Uh, we're, I just, we need to do common ratio. We figure out the value of n. So scientists place E. coli bacteria on a Petri dish. At the end of the first hour, uh, you have 30 bacterial cells. Okay, so we're going to say at the end of one hour, so that's n is equal to one, we're going to define that as being our first term. So we're going to say a is t1, and that's going to be 30. The number of new bacterial cells produced each hour form a geometric sequence, okay? If a total of 4,950 bacterial cells are present at the end of six hours, okay, so so an N is six, then T6, would be equal to four zero nine five zero. <clears throat> uh, oh, this is a total. Uh, sorry, this isn't this isn't uh, T six. This is S six. Yeah, because it says the total number at the end of this. Okay, 
if the total number is this at the end of six hours, use technology. So it means we're going to have to do a graphical solution to figure out how many bacterial cells are actually produced in the sixth hour. Okay, so we're going to try to figure out T6 eventually. Now, the problem is, uh, in order to calculate T6, regardless of uh, which geometric series equation you use, you need to know what the common ratio is. So we need R. in order to use the SN equations. Now, because we know what S of N is, we know S of six is 4,950. We just need to pick one of those equations that's actually going to allow me to calculate where R is. Now, we have two choices. You have the one equation that uh, has the sum. It has A, it has R, and it has N in it. Uh, or you can use the equation that has, uh, I think, what's the missing term? I think it has like a, it has the the last term and it has R in it and the sum. Uh, we need to use the one that uh, has, uh, so we're going to use this one. S of N is equal to A, R to the power of N minus one over R minus one. The one we can't use is we cannot use this one. So the 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 one equation that looks like S of N is equal to, uh, what does it look like? It's like R T of N minus A over R minus one. This one we can't use because you don't know what R is and you also don't know what uh, T of N is. You don't know what the number of uh, cells produced in the six hours is because you have two variables in one equation, you can't solve it. This one we can solve though, because we know the sum, we know the first term, uh, we know N, which is gonna be six, and we just have to solve for R. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this one. Let's put a big X for this one, because we cannot use it. So let's plug numbers in here. So we're gonna figure out the sum after six hours. So that's gonna be S6 is going to be A, and that's gonna be R to the power of six minus one over r minus one and up. now let's start to plug numbers into the equation okay so s6 is four zero nine five zero is equal to a which is 30 multiply by r to the power of six i don't know what it is uh divided by r minus one i'm just going to rewrite it just a little bit differently here i'm just going to put the you don't want to erase that much. Okay, r to the power of six minus one over r minus one. Uh, I'm just gonna put the fraction underneath the brackets here because I'm gonna actually get rid of this 30. I'm gonna move the 30 over to the other side of the equation. So to do that, uh, we'll divide by 30. Divide by 30. And this is going to give me <clears throat> 40,950 divided by 30 is 13.65 is equal to r to the power of 6 minus 1 divided by r minus 1. We're actually going to leave the equation like this. Like, like there's, there's really no way you can actually isolate for r in this one. So we're just going to set the left-hand side to be y1, so that's y1 is 1365. And then y2, we're gonna write down all this junk here. So this is gonna be r to the six minus one over r minus one. And then I'm going to find the intersection between these two uh, mathematical functions. We'll go to the calculator and do that. So this would be, uh, Okay, let's go to y equals. So we got 1365. Okay, we're going to clear that. And then we're going to write down, uh, instead of r, we need to write down x. I should have written that down first. Let's just quickly change that. Okay, so x to the power of 6 minus 1 over x minus 1. 
Okay, so x to the 6 minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Okay, let's go ahead and graph this. I have no idea what it's going to look like. You have an x to the power of 6 function, which will probably be pretty ugly. Uh, so let's go to the window settings. And let's go to zoom standard and see if we can actually see anything, which I doubt. Okay, you can. So this is that funky that, that function on the right-hand side. Now, to get the intersection point, if you look here, uh, the Y1 is 1365. That's going to be a horizontal line that passes through the Y-axis at 1365. So we've got to make the Y-max a lot bigger. So I'll go to window. Let's make the Y-max something like 1500. Go ahead and graph this. Can we see an intersection point? Yep, I can see it now. So let me go to the intersect feature, second calculate, find the intersection point, bring the cursor to where that intersection point is. Bring this one up to the intersection point or close to, get it to guess the solution and it tells me an X is four, Y is 1365. Okay, so that's the value of uh, R. So the common ratio has a value of four. Now I still need to figure out what T6 is. Okay, so T6 is the sixth term in the sequence or sixth term in the series. Okay, so we can use the general uh, term formula to determine this now. So this would be T of N is equal to A r to the power of n minus 1. So that'd be t6 is equal to a, which is 30, multiplied by r, which is 4, and then to the power of 6 minus 1. <clears throat> and then that's going to give me the number of bacteria produced in that hour, which would be 4 to the power of 5, multiplied by 30, and that's going to be 30,000, 720 bacteria produced over the course of that hour. All right, that's it for this lesson. Now, in addition to completing the assigned problems uh, for part one, you can also complete these ones. So this is now gonna start on page, starting on page uh, 70. Do numbers 11, 12, 13, and 15. And I'll talk to you in the next lesson.